You are watching Daybreak and thank you for staying with us. The hashtag is Daybreak. The SMS code is double two four double two at Citizen TV Kenya and at Ayub Abdikadid with me in studio is Nyambura Diongo. She is the Regional Education Learning Initiative, really Kenya Country Coordinator on Matters Education. Your time is all appreciated and many thanks. Good morning. Good morning to you. Lovely having you here on the broadcast. It's Shortly, nice. we'll be joined by Dr. Chris Galgalo, who is an educationist to make his account of what's happening in the country. First, let's begin, Nyamura, with the latest and what has been happening in the country in relation to the question of capitation and the money that is supposed to be going to cater for the education of learners. And, and we seem to be having difficulty even in getting the money to schools. How then do you think this can be best addressed, given that education accounts for 30 percent of our national budget and seems that what we have already is not enough to cater for the education of learners. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I do think that there is a need to address the crisis in capitation mm -hmm. and especially the time when schools get the funds because that determines almost everything that happens within the schools including the, the learning that happens. And remember that schools also rely heavily on uh, capitation from the government mm -hmm. and more from the parents. And what it means is that if the government is not able to release the funds, then the teachers and the leaders of the schools have to go back and figure out how uh, they need to raise the funds. So I think uh, for starters, we have to start by being accountable, especially the government, to try and release the funds that we already have to schools in time so that then the schools can be able to plan and then the deficit that is there because we do know that there is inadequate uh, funding despite, as you stated, that uh, we get the highest share mm -hmm. of the national budget. But there are still challenges and I think that is now when if we can be accountable and start by releasing the funds at the time when we are supposed to release, release the funds, then we are able to figure out how to address these other challenges and even be able to determine the deficit. Because right now as the money is released uh, uh, on, on basis, yeah. uh, then how do you determine where the deficit is? How are you able to tell that uh, within this uh, period of, of time or within this quarter or within this um, year that our deficit was actually from this area? So I think it's important that uh, the government becomes accountable by first releasing the funds that uh, are supposed to be released to the schools mm -hmm. and then from there trying to address and seeing uh, how we can address the inadequate uh, finances in schools. And talking of the inadequacy, because the stakeholders are equally concerned looking at uh, what the Kenya Primary Schools Association uh, CAPTCHA had said, the Kenya Union of Post-Primary Education Teachers COPET as well, and uh, the institutions that continue to grapple with the lack of finances. But given that there is this delay ad admitted by the government and uh, the PS uh, Belio Kipsang on record, how does it, this then further complicate an already opportunity gap that exists in Kenya, mm -hmm. courtesy of the social divide that is as a result of the quality and the standard of education in our country? Um, I, I think that uh, first uh, the poor will continue being poorer and it's looking like um, as we continue discussing education matters that the people who don't have means to access education and pay for it will continue to struggle to pay for education. And uh, I'd like to give a scenario of uh, look at the households that we have in this country and how many, for example, children are in, in each of the households. Let's say we have four on average. Uh, we have four, four children in a household. You find that almost all those children are of school going age. Mm -hmm. So if a household, and, and if you look at most of these households uh, that are below the poverty line, are not even making a lot of money to even sustain themselves with the basic needs. So what it means for the country is that we will continue not providing opportunities uh, to education for the actual people that really need education to be able to get opportunities in life and that will also mean that in the country we are also going to continue uh, sort of not even getting to where we want in terms of our goals as a country yeah. and also we continue diminishing the value of our our people and especially our children especially when you look at at the globe yeah. so the kind of education we are providing is really determined a lot by the resources and that's why you find sometimes uh, even our teachers because of that they are also 
trying to find other ways of making the means. And what does that mean? That the time they dedicate to the schools and the learners is not really adequate for them to be able to provide everything that they need. And if you look at the same, same schools, we have very high number of learners in most of these schools. So again, we continue diminishing the quality of education, not just from the numbers, but also from the resources issue where we are, we are making our teachers and all the yeah. school leaders yeah. try to find other means uh, so that they can just also make ends meet from their end. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and that other means is the, also the what the Kenya National Union of Teachers call teachers managing stress levels which are beyond um, the, their comprehension and how this is having severe consequences in terms of how they can manage schools without the required resources. But given that you have talked about um, the need for resources and to better our education standards. And, and still Kenya, a country that depends largely on its human resource capital, when we export that, and in either the European market, in, in, in the Americas, in, mm. in Asia, you see that the Kenyan educated or personnel are very much thriving in different sectors, technology, arts and science, medicine, and that's despite having a minutia in terms of our allocation of resources to fund education here in the country. Mm -hmm. What then can happen in terms of even getting more people to work across the world if we are to get the adequate resources needed for education? Can we triple that number, double that number? I, I do think we have the human resources we need. And uh, you know, TSC is actually the biggest employer in this country. Yeah. So I, I think the issue of uh, human resources and the teachers that we have, I don't think the issue is the numbers. I think the issue is the management of uh, the teachers. And in terms of management is all, all across the board, uh, from the national government to all the uh, other sagas that are involved yeah. to manage the teachers. Because we still have a high number of teachers that are, are unemployed in this country, and yet we still have a deficit of uh, teachers within some of the schools. And some of the challenges that they face, uh, we all know some of them include uh, insecurity, and most of them don't want to be deployed in areas where there is insecurity. And I think as we continue thinking about the globe, we've even seen our teachers getting um, awards at the global level because of the kind of work that they are doing. Because the teachers really put in a lot of work in this country. But I think the management and governance structures uh, for teachers need to change. And I think also the remuneration of our yeah. teachers. I know the discussions have been there uh, on how do we remunerate our teachers. Is it adequate? And what structures are we putting in place to make sure even, for example, when you think about their, their career growth, how is that happening? And is it objective or does it remain to be subjective? So I think in terms of the globe, uh, I wouldn't say we take our teachers elsewhere because yeah. we have the need. The need is there for them, but I think the structures and governance are really needs to improve so that we can be able to manage the teachers in the country, deploy them, and help them to work efficiently and effectively. Mm. And that's despite uh, struggling with uh, the absorption of teachers, because if you look at the employability rate, one of uh, the major factors that um, the current administration had worked on is the absorption of the teachers because of the available pool of professionals within the teaching fraternity who are available. Given that, and according to P.S. Belio Kipsang, he said we have released 25% in the next 10 days. That was some days back. We should have released the resources. And this one, he appeared before the Parliamentary Public Accounts Committee of the National Assembly to reply to audit queries. And this is the government setting aside of 1,420 shillings for capitation funds primary, and 22,244 for secondary schools across the country, and in the ratio of 50, 30, 20% to come to the 100% which is required. The point is then, why then do we still struggle with the release of the funding? Yes, there is the allocation part on paperwork when you look at the budget and what's allocated to the education sector, but still we are experiencing delays in the release of these funds. What could be the problem? Is the, bureauc is the bureaucracy so complex? Um, I, I think um, in terms of, um, back to my point of accountability, there is a lot happening within the Ministry of Education and the structures they have put there to be able to release these funds. But again, I, I think uh, when you look at the responsibilities and how the, the structure of the Ministry of Education has been set, I think the question for me would be 
how do we get to understand exactly what is happening within the Ministry of Education in terms of releasing the funds? Because we have a lot of uh, information, uh, but do, at what point do we actually get to hear uh, admission of, from the Ministry of Education saying these were the challenges? Because they are the only people who can clearly tell us where the challenges are, especially yeah. when it comes to releasing of the funds, whether the delays from the national government, and whether when the money is actually released, what happens in between? Yeah. Why are schools getting delayed to get the money? Are there some middlemen along the way? Are there some structures that are really not working? So I think uh, for me the question would be to uh, for the Ministry of Education to be able to really get into within internally and be able to tell us what exactly is happening uh, so that then there's delay of release of the funds uh, from, from the national government. Okay. Dr. Chris Kargalo joins us here on the broadcast. He is an educationist. Dr. Ari, good morning. Good morning. Lovely having you here on the broadcast and thanks for making Sorry time. for being late. <laughs> Because of the jam. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. We appreciate your time. And uh, starting <coughs> off with the uh, capitation crisis, and uh, there was uh, the concern that was expressed by stakeholders. Not, for example, said we have no option other than closing schools because principals cannot feed the learners, and we cannot run schools across the country. This seems to be a problem that has uh, been so very present in previous regimes as well, and how we handle our education sector. Why do you think, as I had asked Nyambura here, that there is a delay in release of school capitation fees? And who do you think bears the responsibility? Actually, thank you very much. Actually, education is uh, one of the key uh, department that needs a special attention by the Ministry of Education. And uh, the capitation delayed probably in the process of disbursing this money. And uh, actually in the education sector, we need to plan prior to the school opening. And when the school opens, everything should be set uh, rolling. But uh, I'm wondering whether there was a uh, a, a process where it was delayed somewhere from the Treasury, from uh, uh, parliamentary budget approval, and then to the Treasury, from Treasury to the disbursement to the Ministry concern, like the education, and then from education it goes to the particular schools. So this is a process that needs to be completed within a short time possible. But uh, all in all, the, you know, the Ministry of Education has to plan ahead of time. Because uh, when the school opens, they know that the school cannot operate without money. And they should plan ahead of time. So there must be a delay somewhere. And uh, nobody is telling us the truth. Why is capitation delayed? And uh, the stakeholders are like us now, we are wondering. We are not involved. What is the cause of the delay? And uh, how, how are we going to solve this problem promptly and amicably? So this is a problem where it, the challenges comes all over, time and time again, because uh, it's not one time. I'm sorry, I yeah. was one time also principal. It's not one time. It keeps on recurring, recurring, recurring. So how do we go about this issue of solving this problem once and for all? Is non-involvement of stakeholders a problem here? Uh, it's, it's not really a non-stakeholders problem, but the problem is if the budget has been approved, why is there a delay, uh, you know? And uh, the other time I saw a friend of mine was uh, putting in the air that uh, capitation is not about the food, it is about the tuition and what have you. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, and even I'm telling my friend through this uh, media, that uh, capitation is, uh, is everybody's concern. It's not about the food, it's not about the facilities for learning, it's not about infrastructure development, it's not about teachers' payment and what have you. It is wholesome whole issue. So when capitation is being delayed, then even the parents will be forced now to pay the outstanding balance, which cannot cut up for the whole school in, uh, in process. So it is, a, it is a whole concern about the parents, the Ministry of Education, the other stakeholders or partners in development and what have you. 
So I think it is, uh, it is high time that uh, we have to explain the public the reality on the ground. Yeah, and when we get back from the break, Dr. Galgalo and Nyambura will, will proceed with the discussion and, and talk about the delays and uh, the questioning of the same and how the stakeholders, including Nat, Copet and the uh, Parents Association, uh, aggrieved a lot in regards to the delay that is supposed to be happening in the ratio of 50, 30, 20, and also recent statement by the education CS, Ezekiel Machogo, who said, public schools in Nairobi only constitute 31%, while 69% are private ones, therefore posing the question of the quality of education across public schools, especially in a setup like the county of Nairobi, and how that can be fixed with regards to the fundamental question of the social divide and the stratification of the Kenyan society in the context of education. This is Daybreak, and thank you for staying with us. The hashtag on X is Daybreak. The SMS code is 22422 at Citizen TV Kenya and at Ayub Abdikadil. Back with more with Dr. Galgalo and Nyambura after the break here on the broadcast. Stay tuned.